welcome everyone. We're so happy to have you here with us in the house of the Lord. Those of you on Facebook Live and YouTube Live are listening in your car on 97.7 FM. We're here and we're all ready to have a great time in Jesus. Let's give the Lord a praise right now. Let's put our hands together and thank Him for all He's done. Amen. Would you stand with us? And we want to say once again, welcome those that are here thus far. Those that are watching, welcome. Today is a very special day. Today is Anointing Sunday. And of course, we're going to be sharing anointing oil. We're going to be preaching a message about the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I believe there is a special anointing today to pray for your needs. And let me just say this, so many requests came in at the last service at the close there was not time enough to read them all. And so we're going to, from our last service, make sure, those of you, if you're watching again, we will be getting to every one of those requests. So many came into the last service. Now, why is it important to get your prayer request in? Because when you put action on faith, how many believe God honors action and faith? Faith with action calls, as I say all the time, a reaction from God. It's so easy to get your prayer request to us. Those of you watching on Facebook, just go to the send message or the comment section. If you're watching on YouTube, the chat section, our team is right over here to my left. Our faithful sisters of faith are watching the screens, ready to get your prayer request in. I want to share this. Our praise reports have literally doubled. Why? Because we're praying for more people, praying for more needs. How many believe that God could give you a praise report? Shout amen with me right now. As your faith, so be it unto you. So get those requests in. Faith City Family Church Facebook, the send message or the comment section on YouTube, the chat section. Let's stretch our hands out to one another here that are in church in the house of the Lord. Those that are watching and listening. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we stand on your word. Your word says in Matthew, the 18th chapter, that if just two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in the midst of them. You said if just two would agree on earth as touching anything, they would ask and it would be done of the Father in heaven. Lord, we stand on your promises. And God, we are praying today that miracles of healing and deliverance would happen. People that have addictions would be set free in the name of Jesus. Those that have been depressed and discouraged would be healed from it in the name of Jesus. Those, Lord, that have a wounded heart or a wounded spirit, God, you would restore them in Jesus' name. Lord, I declare this time together as a time of healing, a time of miracles, a time of deliverance in Jesus' name. Can somebody raise up your hand and give God a prayer? or give God a shout. God, we thank you for what you are going to do as we are worshiping together. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to give us some shout-outs today to our musicians. Let's give it up for Brother Dana Saray, our music director. We praise the Lord for him. Sister Crystal, our worship leader, amen. Brother Josh, I appreciate him on the bass. Brother Vernell on the drums behind our walls of honor. Right, let's give it up for our prayer ministry team and our ushers. Amen. So again, to get in your prayer request, Faith City Family Church, Facebook, send message or comment section, YouTube, the chat section. Listen, when you make a joyful noise, that means you're putting up praise. And how many have found out when the praises go up, a blessing just might come down. Let's put our hands together one more time. Sister Crystal, come and let's worship the Lord. Amen. All right, let's continue to worship God in this place this morning. He is truly an awesome God. And God, we glorify your name. Hallelujah. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Forever we will sing. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Our great and matchless King. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Forever we will sing. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Our great and matchless King. Yeah. Forever we will sing. Forever. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Our great and matchless King. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Forever we will sing. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Our great King of all kings. King of all kings. Lord of all Lord. We worship you, Jesus.
like this. Just clap and say, look to your neighbor and say, after this, we're going to have some victory. Yeah. Turn up a little bit, Chris. Hey. Let's get the people involved. Yeah. One, two, come on. One, two, three, down. Song says, after this, there'll be some glory. God specialized. And God loves to move. Just so he like this. Clap those hands, everybody. I feel victory in this place. I feel deliverance. Come on. Hey, 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 I feel that hey. God is working on your behalf.
feel that God is moving mountains. The Bible said God inhabits the praises of his people. Somebody clap those hands. And I want you to shout while you're clapping your hands. I want you to shout, it's done in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout, it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Stretch your faith, it's done. It's done. Come on, say it's done. It's done. Play that song, Brother Dana. How many out there in the congregation could raise up a hand and say, somewhere in the last 12 months, God has done a miracle in your life. In the last 12, my hand is up. I want to encourage somebody. In the last 12 months, I was needing the help from only God that he could provide, and God came through. And I'm telling somebody in church, somebody watching right now, somebody listening in your car right now, that God is an able God. We're going to get ready to pray. And I'm going to ask Brother Harmon if he would come with the prayer requests that are coming in. It's not too late to get your prayer request in. Those at church, the usher will take your prayer request. Facebook, if you're watching on Facebook right now, just go to the send message or the comment. YouTube, the chat section. Thank you, my brother. Kalia, I have a praise report, she says. I have a testimony, my friend, that had the blood clot, I remember this, that had the blood clot is recovering and she's doing very well. She's up and doing work around her house. Thank God. How about a loud praise the Lord? I remember when that one came in. Thank you, Jesus. God is in the miracle working business. This says, I need healing uh, for my continuous recovery from chemotherapy. God bless you. Malu, we are praying for you that God is going to get you through the process and you're coming out every wit hole in the name of Jesus. Leslie, Leslie Wells says, I want to thank God for being awesome, magnificent, wonderful, and excellent. Give an amen for that. Amen of praise she wants to give prayer request, please pray for the Sylvester family. This says from Debbie, please pray for my family and Aunt Lorraine, who is in the hospital in Philadelphia. Thanks, Brother Harmon. This says from Ava, please pray for my health. I'm having body pain. This says pray for the Johnson family in Atlanta, Georgia for Cousin Betty who passed, uh, and also Sister Pat sending all condolences, yes, all the way down to Atlanta. Please continue to pray for my niece who has cancer. We're expecting a miracle. Somebody shout amen. How many believe we need to expect a miracle? Yes, we do. Jeanette Austin, please pray for healing in my shoulders. The pain is bad. Also, pray for favor on my job. Yes, we will. Valerie, I send God's blessing and prayers to the family of Congressman John Lewis, a great and powerful civil rights legend. Somebody shout amen for that. Praise the Lord. Comfort to his family. Jamie Brokenball Allen. Please continue to pray for my mother, Roberta, as she continues to face attacks on her health. Sandra says, I need prayer for healing in my life. Lisa Davis, please pray for our Faith City Church family that we continue to be faithful in giving tithes and support in the sanctuary and online. Pray for Deneen Smith as she travels back home from Qatar this week. Katrina Hawk, please pray for my mom, Debbie Hawk. Cindy Roberts, please pray for financial overflow for my family and me, yes. Nina Parter Bryson, please pray for my business, that it grows in clients and financially to help more people to care for their temple and that I always run my business in God's way. 
Jawana Kirk Carroll. Please pray for Grandma Macy Kirk and the family. Chris, Christian B is requesting that Jesus would touch and deliver the mind of my son, David. Unspoken, no name, but pray over my finances. I can't see a way, but I know that God has made a way. Amen. I desperately need a car and struggle to meet my financial obligations. Sometimes I can't even afford my medicine without borrowing from the family. I want to be a lender and not a borrower to my, to my, uh, uh, to my uh, blessing. I want to pass blessing along to others. In the name of Jesus, I speak increase right now in Jesus' name. And this says from Sharon Custis, please keep us in prayer. Markevis, Nakisha, Erica, Precious, John, and Kavan, thank you, Jesus. Daria Rushton, please pray for me to have wisdom to deal with situations at my job. Tasha Poole, please pray for Wayne's family. He lost two uncles last month. So sorry. Eddie Lang, please pray for Ava Church, who is being treated at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, that she will get through this situation. Amen, Eddie. And then uh, in service from Brother Joseph Charleston of Rehoboth Temple Church of God in Christ. We're praying for God's ministry in the tri-state area. Oh God, please heal our nation and, our, and bless our families in the mighty name of our Savior Jesus. And it says, ask the Lord to bless my wife Deanna and our prayer line families in the name of Jesus. Amen. So he was visiting from a church of God in Christ. How many glad we all can worship together? Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Harmon. Marsha Weeks, please pray for me. I have knee and hip pain. I want to ask a question. How many thank God for all these requests that are there? We just keep coming more and more and more every single week. People are believing for miracles. Kenyatta, please pray that all generational curses will be removed from the Dorsey family. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Jeanette, I'm asking everyone, now listen to this, this is so sad, to agree with me in prayer for a miracle healing for Kayla Scott's 22-month-old son who accidentally shot himself in the chest with a construction nail gun. How many believe God will save his life? Would you stretch your hands out? Everybody here, everybody watching. Father, we need a miracle, 22-month-old baby. God, we pray for a miracle turnaround in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we pray the doctors will be amazed of his healing and recovery in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for it right now. And can, uh, can yet to please pray for my brother Sean to get help for his addictions. If it would be all right, could we ask everyone to stand now in the congregation for our time of prayer. We're going to pray for all these needs and we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for your family. What do you need in your life? What mountains need to move in your situation? How many can shout God is able right now? Come on, shout it with me. God is able. Come on, shout it again. God is able. God is able. God is able. Let's stretch our hands out to each other. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I'm stretching my hands out to all my brothers and my sisters in Christ. And Lord, you said if just two would come into agreement that we would ask and it would be done of the Father in heaven. I pray for those of you in the sanctuary right now that God will heal your body if your issue is a physical situation. I pray that God would heal you physically I pray the pain will leave. I pray that God would heal somebody right now is getting healed in the area of a metabolism issue. You know who it is. I'm calling that out by faith that God is healing and delivering you in the name of Jesus right now. God, I thank you that somebody 
Lord, with a tumor. God, you are healing them in the name of Jesus. Uh, it is dissolving right now. Whether it's here in the service, uh, whether on the other side of this camera, Jesus is healing that tumor right now. Glory to God. Uh, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus uh, that you would open up some fresh opportunities for people. And Lord, I pray for those that are desiring an exit, oh God, Lord, that you would prepare the way in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for your exit strategy in Jesus' name. And Lord, I believe that there are people here watching and listening. You are about to exit but enter the most amazing season of your life. I don't know who that is for, but God is telling me to tell somebody, give him praise by faith in the name of Jesus. You're about to exit the grief and the frustration, and you are about to walk into a season of blessing and promise that God has been working on for a long period of time. But you see, God was preparing you. God is preparing you even now in the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise. Father, I'm praying against things like depression. I know we get so many requests and calls during the week. People saying, I'm depressed. It doesn't seem like things are getting better. But listen, your problem is you can't let your eyes and your ears get in the way of the miracle that God is working on. You don't go by emotion. You don't go by what you see, what you feel, or what you hear. The Bible said that our warfare is not flesh and blood, but it is in principalities and powers. I'm here to tell somebody that God in the spirit world is working on your miracle deliverance in the name of Jesus. Can we have a praise right now? That nonsense at work, God is handling it in the spirit realm right now. That nonsense at home, God is handling it in the spirit realm right now. Give God a shout. Give him a praise. I feel deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Somebody has said, but I'm tired and I'm weary and I just don't know if I can go on. I'm here to tell you. I've got a scripture for you. The Bible said, let the weak say I am strong. Who is that for right now? Somebody needs to raise up your hand and shout, I am strong. Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You're not strong in yourself. You're strong in the God who is in you in Jesus name I feel a shout coming on right now glory to God somebody who felt weak God is giving you a boost of energy and divine strength hallelujah 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 if you need a 24-hour miracle just raise up your hand right now you need a 20. Listen, by this time tomorrow, you need a resolve. You need, you need closure. You, you need it work. Enough is enough already. Father, right now, people have enough faith to raise up their hand. For a 24-hour miracle, God, we are calling out the 24 our miracle by faith in the name of Jesus. And it might look impossible, but the Bible said with God, nothing is impossible. Luke 1 and 37, I pray that you will remember that this time tomorrow that you will say, my God, I was in church and at about 1128, I said, I need a 24 hour miracle. I pray by 1128 tomorrow in the name of Jesus, you will have that miracle can we have a praise break right now i feel that god is happy because his people are exercising faith hallelujah now we want to if you would stretch your hands out if you would those in the church those watching if you want to be blessed help somebody else get a blessing it's anointing sunday we're going to have a time with our anointing service but we're going to anoint every request that has come in we believe that god has miracles today as you stretch forth your hand brother Harmon and i take this oil and it's in the name of god the father jesus the son 
and the Comforter who is the Holy Ghost, that we command the devil to take his hold, his grip off of people and off their situations in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice in prayer, church. I feel an anointing that people are going to be, I believe the praise reports are not going to double, but they're going to triple in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that every disease, every pain would be healed and delivered right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that this is the hour for physical healing and deliverance. Father, I pray for household deliverance. Lord, many of these have names on them uh, of loved ones that the devil seems like uh, he is uh, running their life. Uh, but I decree and declare that the devil is not going to have his way, uh, but they're going to serve God. Uh, they're coming out of darkness, uh, and they're about ready to enter the light. Amen. Uh, Father, I pray for doors to open. Uh, I pray for finances to flow. Uh, I pray for jobs to come. Uh, I pray for relationships to be healed in the name of Jesus. God, these are coming in from all over the region. I speak to Atlanta, Georgia's request. God, I ask you, I look into the camera in Atlanta, Georgia. May the Lord lay his hand on you and deliver you right now in the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. And there's a 22-month-old child. I decree and declare by faith uh, he will live and not die, and he will say the works of the Lord, uh, and all the days of his life uh, he will have a testimony that a church prayed for me, and God gave me another chance. Uh, God, we thank you for it right now. Can we give the Lord a shout? Can we give the Lord a praise? Oh, hallelujah. I want to stretch my hands out to you one more time. And I'm praying that this upcoming week, I feel led to call it a week of restoration. That whatever you lost, God's going to restore it back to you. Did you hear me, somebody? David said, he restoreth my soul. You lost business, you're about to get totally restored. You lost some money, God knows how to restore it back to you. Whatever you lost, I speak this week. Uh, hallelujah is a week of restoration. Uh, somebody, would you shout it with me and say, this is my week uh, of restoration in the name of Jesus. God, we praise you. And Lord, before we say amen, devil, I know you never want us to give people a chance to get saved. Because somehow, people listening and watching, you think that religion is the ticket to heaven. But there's only one way to heaven. And it's not religion. And it's not how you dress. It's not how you look. It's not where you live or what you drive. It's what's in your heart. Jesus said, man, he looks on the outward appearance. You may look right, but be all messed up. Jesus will save you from the inside out. All you have to do is call on the name of the Lord, and he will save you. I want us all to pray this prayer, because I know there has to be somebody, whether present, whether listening or watching, that you're not ready for eternity. But if you'll pray this prayer, Jesus will save you now. Can we look at the cross? Can we stretch our hands out towards it right now? And everybody repeat after me. Everybody say, Jesus, Jesus this, day, this day, I make up my mind. I, make up my mind. I am not going to hell, going to hell for anybody, for, for anything. For anything. But, I but I make up my mind. I'm going to serve you, Jesus. Because I, I know you've got more for me. I you got more. And before I even go to heaven, I, I know you've got heaven. some heaven on earth. So right now, I confess my sin. I ask for forgiveness. And I ask you to take the sin out of my life and to wash my sin away. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for putting my name in the book of life. Amen and amen. Have out a loud praise God for whoever prayed that prayer. Whoever made that decision, we give God praise. Thank you, church. You may be seated. Thank you for 
your prayers. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your participation. We're so happy to see you here today. Those watching on Facebook and YouTube, our church family, our new friends, we're all in this together. Those listening in your car, you're more comfortable doing that on 97.7 FM. We love you. Everybody, let's give each other a little virtual hug right now. That's how we do it, see? We got to be safe, all right? But this is how we do it. We do it like this. We got the love in the house. We love you. We thank God for you. Growing up in church, I remember one of the old songs they would sing. The song leader was... Uh, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very badly stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Love lifted me. Is there somebody can say that love lifted you? When nothing else could work, Jesus came. And he lifted you out of that pit. Isn't he worthy of praise? Hallelujah. Love lifted me. And I'm so glad today that I can share with you that Faith City Family Church is all about the Summer of Salvation Initiative. Justice, peace, unity. Taking it out to the streets and to the communities. Letting people know when there's nobody else that wants to reach down and pick you up. Jesus, his love will lift you out. Yesterday, what a great day it was in Dover, Delaware. Praise God for the outreach team there with Brother Harmon that was in one of the most at-risk areas in the city of Dover. The Bible says a, a good man's steps are ordered of the Lord. And Brother Harmon was praying, God, where do we take the setup where do we go with the van because they were there to scout the land as we will go back again next Saturday in the summer of salvation for a big day of the cross outreach he pulls up and they begin to interact with the people and I want to be careful how I use my words here we have families watching but there were he said with yards away there were drug deals going down and then other things that cannot be mentioned just a natural flow of business in that neighborhood. But all of a sudden, this lady walked up. Now, how many know God knows where to send you at the right time, at the right person? She walks up and she says, when I saw that van reach gospel, well, now I listen to that station all the time. That's my favorite station. She said, what are you all doing here? And he began to share, this is what we want to do. We want to come in. We want to infiltrate this. We want to, you know, we want to be able to lift up Jesus. We want to see the neighborhood get better. We want to change the atmosphere. Long story short, she's kind of the lady who's got the key to the neighborhood. She said, let me tell you, this is how you want to do it. And all, she went and talked to, there you are, Brother Harmon. That was a miracle, wasn't it, yesterday? All of a sudden, my phone rang, and you said, Pastor, I want you to talk to this lady out on the street. He put her on the phone, and she began to say, this is an answer to prayer. We have been praying that somebody would come in this God-forsaken neighborhood where they're doing all kinds of ungodly things uh, and let us know that things can get better. How many believe things will get better? Or can I hear some amens? And I'm talking to her on the phone, and I'm praying with her, and she says, here, what we're, what we're going to do. She says, you can send to me, you get to me anything you want, and I'm going to have, she goes, I'm kind of like the neighborhood mom here. I'm going to make sure that everybody all and all these blocks in this radius is going to know that we're coming, you're coming, and there's a change coming. I need some shouts in here. Listen, Brother Harmon went down there not on a lark, but just a drive of faith. Of course, it did help that when he pulled up, we had big packages of hot Chick-fil-A sandwiches for free. I bet it did help. Isn't it amazing what chicken can do? I said, can I get some amen? Isn't it amazing what chicken will do? As the, as the van pulled up to Chick-fil-A in Dover and picked up a big load of Chick-fil-A sandwiches. Josh, you look hungry right now. Amen. And they're, they're saying, where all this Chick-fil-A come from? Jesus. 
not a church, not a preacher. And so I really believe that we are about to have a move of God down in that area in Jesus' name. Can I hear a loud amen? But let me just give a quick little testimony because there are always people that need to be brought up to date on what the Lord has recently done in the Summer of Salvation initiative. Just a little quick background here. And those of you that are aware of this already, thank you for bearing with me. But it was only two weeks ago that a mother and daughter were walking down the street. Someone jumped up out of nowhere. I don't know if it was a car. I don't know the total narrative on that. But they showed up, pulled out a gun, put it to her daughter's head, and shot her daughter in front of her mother. Just a nightmare, a horrible, horrible thing. The girl obviously did not make it and she left behind a four-year-old son. Sweet little boy, has a lot of health issues. I was on the phone with the mother quite a while and she just cried and she would talk, she'd be okay, she'd have to cry. She went in and out of grieving and so forth. I said, you need to get this out, take your time, listen. We're here to help. I said, how can we help you? She began to share some things they need. And I'll never forget this. To those of you maybe where money's been tight or you've been going through a tight time, I'll never forget the way she said this to me. Right in my ear, she says, we ain't got nothing. And I felt that, the way she said, we ain't got nothing. I said, what do you need? She began to say, and she says, the little fella that he has these health issues and has a little tube in his stomach and all these things all the time and we need these things from the store and these certain kind of pull-up diapers and these things and and so uh, we made a note of all that let me just tell you long story short we went with a huge delivery and unloaded that van some of you are shaking your head you were there when, when we did it and we helped that family can we hear a praise God and it was all from Jesus Christ but I said, well, how else can we help? She said, we ain't got nothing. Can somebody do a memorial for my daughter? We don't know anybody. We can't pull any strings. I said, you need a memorial? Perfect. Let's combine the day of the cross with the memorial for your daughter. Let's just do it all at one time. And so here's what happened. I'm going to take you out on the street with the team and everything and how beautiful it was that day. Flowers. We're handing out a lot of PPE bags because people are walking around in these areas and they're not wearing any masks. It started with the children. How many know it's good to teach them? Amen. And uh, we were loaded up and gave a lot of that out. And then our team and a couple, I see a couple of you ladies over there that were helping that day made, helped Brother Harmon make a wall of memory, a memorial wall right out on the street and put up all these pictures up of, of the dear girl, 19 years young. I'm not mentioning names for security purposes and retaliation purposes, but look at that wall. Isn't that a beautiful thing right on the street? A memorial service. And then they went to get the mom, but the mom just was overwhelmed with grief, which is understandable, and they just had to take time with her as they were walking her up to the end of the block, to the cross, and to that wall with her daughter's pictures. They eventually got her there, and uh, they were continuing to look at the, I think there's five or six brothers and sisters in the family. And then once uh, they got mom up there, they set her in the chair, and I was preaching, as I always do, the simple, short gospel message. Mom was just continuing to deal with her grief, touching the pictures of her daughter, kissing the pictures of her daughter. As a parent, I can't imagine this. My God, what a heavy burden to bear. But the message went out. People prayed the sinner's prayer as mom was grieving. They got saved. People kept coming. Some would come, then they'd leave. Others would come. The team stayed close to mom there to comfort her, just to let her know that she's not alone. There's one of her sisters, the girl that was shot, one of her sisters, I believe. 
And then I ask, as I always do, I said, if you felt Jesus saved you today, please take time and sign your name on the cross. We want you to remember that on this particular day, you received Christ as your Savior, and it's free will, and people took the longest time doing it, and then fast forward towards the end, the precious mother signed her name as well. It was powerful, powerful. It changed the atmosphere of that very dangerous area. One of the streets is Pine Street. Some of you from Wilmington know that one name would tell you everything. And then we released balloons up into the sky because the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I was so happy a lot of children were present because that's something they'll always remember. These kids will know. This family just wanted to remain in grief for a while. The mom got on the mic and said, thank you for making this possible for me and my family. Thank you to everybody who makes it possible. The packages of love kept going out. Gospel tracks in them, the cross necklaces. It was tremendous. A very terrible tragedy. But somehow, the light of Jesus was able to shine through it all. Mom's hugging Brother Harmon, giving him a kiss, thanking him and everybody, thanking you, really, that you're giving that makes these things possible. We praise the Lord. Can we give Jesus a hand for a wonderful outreach, part of the summer of salvation? And now we're headed this Saturday to our next location. And... Uh, there's a lot of drug activity where we're going this Saturday. But that's not too hard for Jesus to take care of nor to handle because the light of the gospel is greater than the darkness of sin. How many feel good about the summer of salvation? Can I hear a praise, God? I, I feel good about it. Many times people are quick to grab a mic and give opinions on what should be done. But after you've talked you got to put some action on what you say. Can I thank all of you here in church for helping to make the action side possible? Can I thank those of you on the other side in Facebook and YouTube? Because without giving, without support, we can't even keep the lights on. And again, I've asked people, people have asked me, and, they, and I appreciate the love and the prayer request, the concern about pray for our church that we'll make it through these COVID times. And uh, my response is we make it a week at a time, a day at a time. Uh, this will come up, that'll come up. We had two of our big AC units. You know, it's not a window unit here. When an AC unit goes out, it's a five-ton York unit. Two of them went out. Hey, what are you going to do? You're going to trust God and it's going to get fixed. Can I hear a praise God in the name of Jesus? Always something going on, those $5,000 units. But God is good. And as I stand before you today, I'm thankful that we're continuing the outreach in the name of Jesus. And we're not going to let COVID-19, we're not going to let economic times get in the way of God wanting us to win souls. So I want to say thank you once again. It's your tithing, it's your offerings, it's your generosity and your help that we're able to keep things in a forward direction. I'd like to share the verses on giving. I always share them because the power is in the Word of God. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now, here which says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. The Bible says that when we give God our tithe, our tenth of the money that he gives us health, brains, favor, skill, energy to make, God said, I'll bless you, I'll increase you, and I will protect you. The blessing goes not only to us, but to our children and our children's children. 
Can I hear some amens on God blessing our children because we do the right thing. It's coming on them as well. Today, I want to share with you the very simple ways to give. And we're praying that everyone watching, everyone here, everyone listening will say, Pastor, I'm thankful to be a part of a summer of salvation. There are three to four more locations that we will be going to as God provides. And I'm asking you today to look at these giving options to choose one and say, here's my tithe, here's my outreach offerings. I want to help make outreach happen. You can text to give very securely at that number. You can use the cash app. Many like that as well. It's secure, it's safe, all of these are. The dollar sign, FC2, is the special code for the cash app for the church. But make sure you use the dollar sign, lower, uppercase, doesn't matter. Faithcitynow.com, another way you can give. If you'd rather write a check for your records and send it and mail it to the church, that is also very much appreciated. Our address is Faith City Family Church, 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. Again, 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. And if you would be so kind to help us. Yes, it's summer. Yes, we're in these interesting days. But yes, we're pushing on anyway. And we're staying outside the walls of the church. Every soul that gets saved, you share in every soul because you're giving. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you today for the opportunity to answer yes to Proverbs 1130. He that winneth souls is wise. To say yes to Luke 14 and 23. And Jesus said, go out into the highways and into the streets and compel them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the resources to continue your work and your mission. God, we pray that as people tithe and share, that you would give it back to them in the way they may need it the most. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Again, thank you, everyone. We appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. We'll be back in just a moment. Thank you once again, everyone. We appreciate 
your giving and your support. Without you, none of this happens. This is our last Sunday to recognize graduates. Now, as we look at the two walls of honor, God allowed us to recognize just under 100 graduates. Can we give a praise the Lord? They're all beautiful. They're all wonderful. They're all just, just making us proud. And we have one more that came in here. And her name is Taya Kamalani Good, who graduated from Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia with a Bachelor of Science in Fashion, Merchandising, and Management. Can we give a loud celebration to our dear Taya? Amen. God bless you. Many props to her and all of the graduates. Also, I want to remind everyone to join us on Wednesday for our Hour of Power service. And, of course, you can get your prayer request in then as well as right now. At the close of the service, we will be praying once again today. So if you want to get in your prayer request, our Sisters of Faith have been watching those screens, taking the request. Faith City Family Church Facebook, send message or comment section, or on YouTube, the chat section. Now, we started a special promotion a handful of days ago, and we call it the Be a Difference Maker Challenge. And in just three or four days, we have gotten 123 new friends on our Facebook in a matter of hours. So here's how the promotion is working, because we want to run this a while. Be a difference maker. Take the Faith City Family Church Facebook challenge and have 10. Go back to the other screen, brother. I'll tell you when I'm ready. And have 10 friends like the Faith City Family Church Facebook page. You will receive a free I Am A Difference Maker t-shirt, whatever size you wear. On to our next screen now. Here's how it works. Have 10 friends or family members like us on Facebook. Visit our Facebook page and click the like button and have friends and family members do the same. Then email your name, address, and t-shirt size along with the 10 Facebook like names to faithcityfamilychurch at gmail.com. And after you've done that, you'll get in the mail your brand new I Am A Difference Maker t-shirt. I'm believing that we're going to add on, this is my prayer, at least 2,000 brand new friends. How many believe we can do that? That's very possible. So please do that, and we will get that T-shirt to you in the mail. Well, today, I'm telling you, I'm very excited about the anointing. I've got a message that God gave me on the anointing, because I know that from this point on, the rest of summer... 2020 is going to be an anointed summer. We're going to be encouraging you all throughout the rest of the summer to anoint not only yourself, to anoint not only your loved ones and your family, but to anoint things like your home, your automobile, your wallet. And why? Because, listen to this, listen to Every time you anoint your car, your house, your belongings, your family, whatever you anoint is set apart and covered by God's protection and blessing. Can I hear an amen? I'm glad I was raised in a home. Our mother was an anointing mother. We didn't understand it. It was just me and my brother growing up. But when we were even real little, she would go into the kitchen and she'd get the oil and put it on our heads. I'll never forget when me and my brother started riding the bus to school, even back in the day. She was concerned that we would come home safe riding the bus. What would she do? Anoint us with oil and say, devil, keep your hands off of my two boys in the name of Jesus. How many believe there's power in prayer and anointing? I don't believe it's luck. I'm standing here safe and in my right mind today. 
It's because I had a mother who prayed. I had somebody who anointed me with oil. I need some amens right now. What I'm doing today is a life and death matter. There is power in the anointing oil of Jesus. Can I hear an amen from somebody? The anointing oil speaks of blessing, fruitfulness, and health for God's people. I need a shout right now. And I know the devil doesn't want me to go old school and get Get out the oil, but it's time to get it on out uh, and anoint ourselves, uh, anoint our children, anoint our families, uh, anoint your laptop, uh, anoint your telephone, uh, anoint your debit card, uh, because whatever the anointing touches, uh, it's a sign of blessing. Uh, it's a sign it has been set apart. When my mother would anoint me and my brother, she was saying, my boys uh, that came out of my womb, they're set apart for God. Uh, I don't care what the devil tries they're going to serve the lord and as i stand before you today not only am i saved but my brother saved his family saved and his grandchildren are saved can i hear praise god and it's not luck it's the anointing of the holy ghost can i get a shout from somebody right now i believe i believe i believe in the anointing so the devil better watch himself because I believe the rest of 2020 is going to be a, a, a not only a summer of blessing, but a fall of blessing in Jesus' name. My message is because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. A few brief minutes I'll share. Because of the anointing. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Harmon. The Bible says I want to share five things about the anointing anointing first of all because of the anointing the Bible said that I will not I hope to but I will overcome life's challenges because of the anointing everybody watching everybody in church everybody listening I know every single one of us have some level of challenge going on in our life right now because it's just a part of living life Jesus said in John 16 and 33 these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world you will have some tribulation. Think about what he said. Don't anybody be shocked because you're a Christian that you've got tribulation in your life right now. Jesus said, as a follower of Christ, you will have times of tribulation. But be of good cheer. Somebody say cheer up. Be of good cheer, Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Because of the anointing, I don't hope to overcome. I know I'm going to overcome in the name of Jesus. Because of the anointing, the Bible says that I go from strength to strength and from faith to faith. What I go through doesn't make me bitter. It makes me better. It doesn't make me weaker. It makes me stronger. Because there's a power on my life and your life uh, that is not of this world uh, it's a power that you can't inherit from your mother or your father but it's a power from on high called the anointing uh, of the Holy Spirit uh, and the Bible says the anointing uh, breaks uh, the yokes uh, more anointing uh, more deliverance uh, more anointing uh, more power more anointing uh, more miracles uh, reach up your hand and say Jesus Jesus, uh, fill me with the anointing. Uh, fill me with the anointing uh, in Jesus' name. Because of the anointing. Not only will I overcome uh, life's challenges, but number two, uh, because of the anointing, I will. I, I've done all these in the affirmative. I will live an abundant life. I am not going to barely make it because my God has everything that I need. I said I will live an abundant life. Can somebody repeat after me? Say, I will live an abundant life in the name of Jesus. 
In John 10, 10, Jesus said these words, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they might have it more. He didn't say abundantly. He said more. Can I hear a more from somebody? I'm glad I serve a Jesus who doesn't just say, I'll give you abundance. But he said, I'm going to give you more and a more abundant life. How many could raise a hand and say he can bless you so good that you got more than you really needed amen how many ever been blessed so good you could share it with your neighbor you could share it with your relative you could share it with your co-worker why because Jesus said the anointing will bring the abundant life there are times where there are walls and barriers between us and our provision between us and our increase but how many know the anointing will not Knock down every barrier and every wall and every mountain. As a matter of fact, right now, I believe I'm to declare over you that the walls are coming down between you and your increase, you and your provision, you and your next level of blessing. The anointing is breaking the yoke right now. Somebody give God praise and get ready to walk into your season of provision in the name of Jesus because of the anointing number three because of the anointing there is one who listens so I am never alone this is so critical during the COVID-19 days we're living in people are getting quiet they say they're getting kind of very introspective and and depression is at an all-time high and hopelessness is at an all-time high and discouragement is at, at an all-time high and people are trying just to put a good face on but I'm here to tell you there's an anointing that will break that yoke there is an anointing that will break depression off of you uh, like shackles and chains. Come on, say amen. There is an anointing uh, that will break that isolation feeling. And I'm, I'm the only one going through what I'm going through. Uh, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Uh, whatever you're going through, somebody else went through it. Uh, and God got them through it. Uh, and God's going to get you through it. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, God said, because of the anointing, I am one who will listen and I will never let you be alone. Psalm chapter 3, verse number 4. David said, I cried. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And he heard me out of his holy hill. Let me tell you, one of the ways that you can break, you can break that hold of feeling isolated and alone is to open up your mouth and call on the name of the Most High God. How many know when you're at home or wherever you're at, you need to open up your mouth and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. How many believe when you walk around you're where you live and you begin to declare things and say, things. How many believe it changes the atmosphere? If you've been depressed, some of you watching, you've been depressed the last six months. God is telling me to tell you, walk around your house and in, open up your Bible and walk in every room and say, I plead the blood of Jesus over this room, this bedroom, this kitchen, this bathroom, this garage. This is God's house. This belongs to God. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Well, if you're in a house, walk out on your lawn. Who cares what the neighbors think? They didn't buy you that house anyway. God provided you that home. Walk around your house and say Psalm 91, No plague shall come nigh my dwelling, for God will give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. Walk into the bedroom of your children and lay your hands hands on their pillow and say no plague will come nigh my child's dwelling lay your hand on their pillow and command the devil to take his hands off in the name of Jesus because of the anointing there is one who listens so you can shout I am 
not alone in this thing. Uh, there's somebody walking beside me, uh, and his name is Jesus. Uh, on top of that, uh, goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life, uh, and I'm dwelling in the presence uh, of the Lord. I feel like shouting, and somebody give God a praise right now. I'm talking about because of the anointing. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody give him a praise. <laughs> Joshua chapter 1, verse number 5. Listen to this. I say this over you. I speak this over you, over your children, over your house. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor will I forsake thee. Maybe somebody's got up in your face, got up in your world, trying to intimidate you, but no man will be able to stand before you because it's not the you in you, it's the God in you. And God said the anointing will break the yoke. Can I get a praise the Lord for I feel like jumping off this platform in a minute. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Because of the anointing, next of all, because of the anointing, I have protection, safety, and refuge. I got them all because of the anointing. Sometimes after you watch the news, you need to plead the blood over your mind. Yes, stay with what's going on. You need to be informed. Christians should be informed. But you don't need to spend nine hours in front of that. You need to get that information and then leave it with God. You need to get that, the mask and the gloves and use your head. But you don't need to live in fear. Can I hear an amen? Let me tell you, the Bible said fear hath torment. But the Bible said God did not give us that spirit of fear and torment. But God gave us love. He gave us power. He gave us a sound mind. And you need to say, I'm going to turn out this lamp. I'm going to lay down and I'm going to sleep because God has got my back. I've come this far by faith. Why can't God get me the rest of the way? Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2, I hope somebody will shout when I read this. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, I need some amens on verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. COVID-19, uh, the Lord is my refuge and my fortress and my God. Uh, yes, I will wear my protective gear. I will do what the doctor says. Uh, but I got, listen, uh, besides a doctor, I got a great physician whose name is J-E-S-U-S. -S, uh, and I will say of the great physician, uh, he is my refuge, uh, my fortress, and I will put my trust in him. Whew, hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout right now. Thank you, Jesus. And finally, number five, because of the anointing, Christ, this is huge, Christ can live not just in me. That's good. That's a starting point. But Christ wants to live through you. Some Christians, it only ends where Christ takes up residence. But how many believe Jesus said in Matthew 5, 16, you are the light of the world. Jesus said in the next verse, so let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven because of the anointing. Christ not only lives in me, but I am a walking solution. I am a walking answer. God can use these hands to lay hands on the sick, the Bible says. Does not your Bible still read? And these signs shall follow them that believe in my my name, they shall cast out devils, they will lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. It's time to move on from Christ just living in me, and we need to get Christ living through us, where people are receiving miracles and deliverances right where you work. God's anointing can come down on you. You don't have to have a Bible in your hand. You don't have to get up and holler. All you got to do is let the Holy Spirit speak through you and Christ living through you will change the world around you. Somebody said, I want some of that. Well, it takes the anointing. 
of the Holy Spirit. In Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20, Paul said, it works like this. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I'm still living, yet not I, but it is Christ living in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of the living God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I'm crucified with Christ, but yet I didn't give up the ghost. I'm still alive. And it's not me living in me, but it's the God who saved me living in me. So that's why I'll open up my mouth sometimes and God will speak through my mouth. He will speak for how many know the Lord can give you a word. He can give you a word in season because that is Christ living in you. And every day you need to say, Father, I ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So when I open up my mouth, I'm saying what you want me to say. Uh, these feet are going where you want them to go. Uh, these hands are doing what you want them to do. Uh, and when you do it, it's not just action but it's anointed action. Hallelujah. It's one thing just to pray for somebody. It's another thing to lay hands on them under the anointing and command the devil to come off in Jesus' name. I'm excited about the anointing. How many are glad it's for you? It's for you. Somebody shout, it's for me, it's for me, it's for me, it's for me. It's not just for a preacher. It's not just for an evangelist, but it's for everybody because of the anointing. When you think about the anointing, oh, thank you, Jesus. It's one thing to have anointing oil in a bottle. It's another thing to put it to work. Brother Harmon, I, I want you to come, if you would. Let me put these in your hands here. I've got a couple more up here. We always keep them in the pulpit. Thank you, sir. The first service... I didn't know that, that, and of course, praise the Lord, you can see that a few more folks are beginning to come to church. Many still cannot come. That Praise the Lord for those who can come. Many cannot. We don't want to listen. I've looked in these cameras since April. That's when we started streaming in April. I looked in these cameras and always said, don't you dare worry about coming to church, putting yourself at risk. God is everywhere. We can worship in any, any means necessary. Don't you ever feel pressure from me or this church. But at the first service today, for whatever reason, there was quite a number of more people who came for whatever reason. They decided to come. We were glad to see them. Whosoever will may come. And Brother Harmon shared with me while Brother Dana was playing for the offertory that he said, Pastor, we're just a little short on the oil because there was so many at the first service. You can't, in, in these COVID times, you can't guess who's going to come. It's really difficult. But I want to say this. I was praying while I was preaching. Somebody said, you were praying while you were preaching. How many believe you can multitask in the Holy Ghost? Amen. You can be preaching but watching over there. The Bible said, watch and pray. But I believe we're still going, even though we ran short of oil, and listen, what we're going to do, if you want oil sent to your home on the way out, I'm going to ask our ushers, I don't know if they have to throw something together, maybe they don't, but I want to make sure there's paper, and on your way out, you give us your, your address, or you email the church, Faith City Office, email, uh, gmail.com. I will send to you this week. Now, how many know that's a good problem to be running out of oil in case instead of nobody took one? Nobody got it. Nobody wanted any oil. I said, what, what, Brother Charlie? He said, Pastor, I'm sorry. All those people that first service. So here's what I want to do. I want us, as I promised, that we would anoint ourselves and anoint our loved ones. We can still do that. Now, Brother Charlie, I have an idea which could be a dangerous proposition. My mother always said, here's what I want to do. Let's get two or three ushers. Now, are you all right with this? If you're not, you didn't hurt my feelings. Would it be all right if the ushers walked around and held out the oil 
and you put your finger in it so we can have our anointing. Is that all right with you? Nobody's going to touch it. They're going to hold it. You just take your finger. Is that okay? How do you all feel about that? Are you all right? Now, if you don't want to do it, just give the usher a sign and he'll pass on by. And what you can do, maybe you sweat a lot, you can take the sweat off your head. I'm not being funny. And say, by faith, that's all I have. Come on, say amen. I mean that. Now, those of you watching, while the ushers are doing it, come on, ushers, let's do it now. Just hold it there and people can put their finger and touch it. It's the oil. Those of you watching, go to your kitchen if you don't have oil. If you didn't, we've been mailing out oil for weeks. But if you didn't get your oil in the mail or you didn't know to do it, go in the kitchen. My mother used to use, I think it might have been Wesson cooking oil. God doesn't, there's no scripture in the Bible that said it's got to be a certain brand. Just go get some oil. It's the faith. It's like grape juice and communion. So you're going to want to get your oil because we're going to have a prayer before we go our separate ways. The ushers are moving around. Anybody who wants to do it, you don't have to do it. No pressure, but just an idea if you wanted to. Or you can use the sweat off your forehead. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God will use anything. My mother anointed me and my brother with oil from the kitchen. It must have worked. Thank you, Jesus. Because she didn't have any oil from church. Hallelujah. All right. I believe our ushers are almost done. Thank you for being understanding. We did not think that so many would come out for the first service today. Thank you. We apologize. We will have more oil here next Sunday. If you want some oil, Brother Harmon will make sure we will have an overflow because he said he needs it for the cross outreach this coming Saturday. Would it be okay if we all stood to our feet now for our anointing prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. We're so blessed. We're going to bless and consecrate this oil because the anointing oil speaks of blessing, fruitfulness, and health for God's people. I want everybody to take that oil on your finger and say this after me. Say, in the name of Jesus, I consecrate by faith this oil in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter of the Holy Spirit. This oil is activated. It is anointed. It is consecrated. Please repeat, say, the anointing oil speaks of blessing, fruitfulness, and health for all of God's people. This anointing oil delivers me, my family. Whatever it touches, it brings blessing. It brings healing. It brings protection. It brings increase in the name of Jesus. Now I want you to take that oil and anoint yourself. Make the sign of the cross, those in church, those that are watching right now, we anoint ourselves in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter of the Holy Spirit. We anoint you to be well in your mind, well in your mind body, uh, well in your finances, uh, well in your relationships, uh, well in your family, uh, well in your workplace, uh, well in the name of Jesus, and we decree and declare that it is well with your soul. Hallelujah. God, we praise you. The anointing breaks the yoke, uh, and I say over you before I say amen, uh, beloved above, above all things, I would that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers in the name of Jesus you are blessed you are anointed you are consecrated and this is your week of miracles and favor in Jesus name we pray and all God's people said amen would you give a big praise to the Lord right now thank you Jesus thank you Jesus congregation would you be so kind 60 more seconds. Prayer request came in again from Facebook. Teresa Wallace, I need a house. We speak a house into her life in the name. She doesn't have a house to live in. God, give it to her in the name of Jesus. Byron Brooks, pray for my mother. 
Irma who was fighting a health challenge. Yes, Lord, be healed in the name of Jesus, Mom. Alethea Miller, please pray for my ex-husband. He is losing his battle to alcohol addiction. He is spiraling not far from the bottom. Pray for him. I pray, Alethea, for your ex-husband. We rebuke the hold of alcohol on him. Somebody pray with me in the name of Jesus, devil. Loose him and let him go. Valerie, we pray, yes, for world peace and equality, yes. Good word, Sister Valerie Williams. God, we pray for peace around the world, and yes, we pray for equality, for justice, oh God. Peace and unity, we pray. Anita, we pray for your son, Jamal, that God will work out the issues with his landlord. We pray for his healing body, mind, and soul. In Jesus' name, God, let it be done. We pray uh, for Dosh, uh, for those who are about to be evicted from their homes. That's a yes, due to COVID-19. That I saw that online. Many possible evictions. Pray for the innocent and casualties of this COVID-19 war. God, we pray for favor that people will receive mercy. They'll not be placed out on the street, them and their families, oh God. And Lord, we pray for an end to come to COVID-19 somehow, some way, in the name of Jesus. This says, Candace says, pray for favor for my partner as he heads to court so that he, he and his son can be reunited. God, we lift this up to you right now in Jesus' name. Janelle, we pray for healing and financial blessing for the household. Receive it right now in Jesus' mighty name. And then two more here. Uh, I want to pray for my sister. This is from Faith Green. Grace Holden, who is in the hospital, and my whole family, the Green family and the Stanford family. Mom Green, where are you at? You must be in the building here. I stretch that out to you, Mom Green, in the back. We agree with you, Mom Green. Your family will be saved and peace in your family and healing for Sister Grace Holden in the name of Jesus, who was in the hospital. And then last but not least, uh, we pray for Keith Miner. It says, pray for our new house for a new house we need it we haven't we have oh wait a minute pray for our new house we need it we have seen it and love it how, how many like that for faith they're claiming it in faith father we pray for that new house to come into reality i'm looking at a member of the church she's over here god gave you that dream if god did it for you sister god will do it for this one in the name of jesus god we believe it right now can we close out this service with a loud praise come on and a shout god we give you praise thank you lord Thank you, Lord, for the anointing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Would you all reach out and give your little brother a hug up here? I love you. I wish I could hug you all, but we're not allowed. But I love you. You know I love you. God bless you. Have a safe day. Love you much. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, I feel the anointing in here. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir, Brother Gaiman. I feel the anointing. Glory to God. Yes, oh, my sister, I feel it. Amen.